We're explaining the dependency of plants and animals energetically. So Jen, did you get any of that stuff in biology today? Um, I think it was something about the relationship between animals and photosynthesis. And something about aerobic respiration in plants. So I'm still kind of confused. We should go check this out somewhere in the environment. Yeah! Road trip! I'm looking in my textbook and it says that during photosynthesis, plants take in carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight that are transformed into oxygen in the light-independent reaction and glucose in the Calvin cycle. Animals take in the glucose and oxygen that plants produce. It also says that during aerobic respiration with glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, animals are able to create carbon dioxide and water that plants can use, and energy in the form of ATP that our bodies can use. Plants and animals work together to create a cycle for each to receive energy for them to function properly. Well, Congaree would be a good place to make sure it's true. We're here in the Congaree Swamp looking for relationships between aerobic respiration and photosynthesis. Whoa, look what this spider's caught. I guess they must eat dragonflies and any other insects that get caught in their web. Well, where do the dragonflies get their energy? From mosquitoes. And the mosquitoes? I thought they bit people for blood. Well, the female mosquitoes do, but male mosquitoes eat plants. And when eating a plant, they receive 10% of the total energy it's ever created, right? Yeah, and then the dragonfly receives 10% of the mosquito's energy, or 1% of the plant's energy. And the spider receives 10% of the dragonfly's energy, or 1 tenth percent of the plant's energy in the first place. Congaree Swamp is a great habitat for butterflies. They eat nectar and plants, which makes them a primary consumer. We should go check. Okay, bye. La, da, 